Welcome to Tiger Camp. This is Word B, and we're really looking today at making our final application on how to use some of the techniques we've used, and also really a, a more modern idea of you know we're learning about all these different techniques of how to indent and different things like that, but. One of the major uses you're going to find with Word is, is writing documents. And when it comes to writing documents, it's very, very important that you're able to properly edit them and use a lot of the editing tools that are available. And so this lesson is all about red light, green light, blue light, or as I like to call it more, red line green line, blue line. And we'll see what that's about in just a minute. There's a couple of, of interesting steps that you need to do to get started. First of all, you got to start by inserting a header. We talked about that last time as um, you're going to insert a number of different things, starting with your your name, the assignment, and so you can see I, I inserted those very quickly in that way. And, and now we get to really a new part of what I'm going to ask you to do. And this can, this can be done in a number of different ways. Um, something you can do, and I'm going to show you this technique um, just in case you ever run into this scenario. What you can do is you can insert objects um, from files. And one of the cool things you can do is like if you had two different documents, you could kind of, I'm going to use the word merge them together and take that information really quickly over from the document without ever having to open it and copy and paste and all these different things. Um, and so you go text from file and then basically you just need to find the file over here in your drives. Okay. And to do that, you know, you're going to have to go to wherever it's been saved um, and, and figure out will this file open. And it doesn't look like my computer is thinking this, but here's that file. And you can see what I did here is, you know, here's my header, here's the title, here's the date, and I, I double clicked on that file, and now suddenly I have all this information um, about homonyms and celebrities down here. And of course, the point of this lesson is that, you know, there's blue lines, there's green, there's red, and we're going to talk about how to deal with all these different things in just a minute. Now, to get that file, of course, you have to have that file. Um, you know, it has to be in your documents. Um, it's very easy for me to do that because this document would be is mine, right? But first, you have to put it into your possession, right? So to do that, I'll just cover this real quickly, right? You're going to go to your Office 365. You're going to go to OneDrive. You're going to come over here to search, and it's called Word B document. If you just put picked Word B um, and just go to search everything, then um, you're going to find it. Right, here's the Word B document, and you can go ahead and click there. And if you want to use that insert feature, you know the first thing you're going to have to do is um, go to Save As and, and download a copy of it and save it to your to your flash drive, to your device, so that you're able to do that. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, um, the next easy step would be to select it all, um, and then Control you know, control C to copy, and then go to your Word document and press control V, and it, it'll paste in just like how you're seeing it on my screen now. All right. So you have these different ideas. In the end, you'll have a document that looks very, very similar to what is on the screen right now. And I'm not going to um, start fixing this one because that's your assignment to fix this one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a, a, a different document very quickly to show you how to do a lot of these different things. All right, so I put a couple short examples up on this screen to give you an idea of um, how we can start to correct some of the mistakes we have. A lot of the mistakes that we get come from um, homonyms. Homonyms, of course, are words that um, sound the same but are spelt different, and usually because they're also spelt different, they have different meanings. And often there are words that you work with and you 
play around with that you think you're using the correct word, but you're not. And things um, can really have some bad sentences in the end, right? So here we have the sentence, Johnny ate the apple and then threw the core into the, the sea. And as you're reading the screen, you probably notice that there are a number of words that are not used correctly. Um, and it's because they're homonyms. Now, sometimes um, word, it'll identify these things right away and they'll start putting green lines and blue lines and different things like that and they're saying, you're doing this wrong. And sometimes it doesn't. Um, because it's a computer, it's not perfect, it's going to try and help you out as much as it can, but sometimes it just doesn't even know what you're trying to do. And so it just says, whatever. And it really doesn't do anything. So you do have to keep that in mind that proofing is a, an important part of of dealing with words. All right. So you don't see any green lines right now. We've got a blue line right here. We're going to talk about that blue line in just a minute. Um, and then, of course, we have some red words. And red words almost always refer to spelling errors. And so that's where we're going to start um, working with that idea. Now, we've looked at a number of different times, home, insert, um, not so much design, a little bit of page layout. But for this lesson, we're actually going to what's called the review tab. And the review tab has this nice little column over here called proofing. And it can really do a lot of neat features um, that we're going to really study here in just a minute. Now, one of the coolest things you can do and can be a, a really important part of um, you know, typos, you know, looking at your spelling, looking at your grammar, is to do a spelling and grammar check. All right? And so wherever your cursor is sitting, right, this blinking line, the instant you click spelling grammar, it's going to do a check the rest of the way down. And so, you know, if I click that right here, you're going to see a window come up, and right here it's going to start looking at this and saying, what word did you mean? Did you mean car? Did you mean coy? Did you mean coat, core, pull? And it looks at lots of different ways to help you out. Now, if you think that word is spelled correctly, and that is the word that you wanted there, you can click ignore all. An example of this would be um, if I spelt a name like this, and let's say it has just a, a it's a foreign name or something like that, and it's going to look like this. You can, um, you know, you can click here and you can say, okay, ignore all, because this is the correct way to spell it, unless it's supposed to be Miguel. And then, of course, it's giving you some suggestions. All right, And you can do just ignore, and it'll ignore this one word. Now, if you type a whole document and this name comes up again and again and again and again and again, you can click ignore all, and it'll get rid of all your red lines in your entire document. So that can be a really neat feature. All right, From here, um, you, know, you can go through this, this whole spelling check. So I'm going to go back here. Right? And... Our first word is, is core, and we definitely wanted this one. And so I click change, and it goes there. And automatically, it moves on and starts to tell us what's going on with, with your document. It's going to move on to the next one, next one, next one. All right, I'm going to close this, and you can see how that tool works there. All right, so you got the ignore, ignore all, or you get the choice of words. The other way to do this is you can just take your, your cursor here, and you can go over... Um, the red line you can right click and when the right click comes up you get this real quick list and of course this is a repeated word so we can click delete repeated word and let's get rid of that right, if I go here to the spelling mistake it's gonna go here and it's gonna give me a couple different options of, of what might possibly be happening you can even go to and really add a word to your dictionary that is correct and you're gonna use frequently um, and is not a part of words dictionary at the time. All right. Now the dictionary continues getting better and better, um, so make sure if you do use this feature it is correctly spelled and it's the correct word um, to do that. Now we definitely want the word Miguel there and so we're going to go ahead and do that. And so I can go through this two different ways. I can do spelling and grammar. All right. I wanted the word the source there so I can click change there. All right. Um, I have this idea of you know, spilled or spilled, um, the trash spilled out of the container. And so I'm going to go to spilled there and container, right? 
And, and now you notice that it, it, it's shifted, right? The whole sentence got highlighted and it's going to a grammar idea. Okay, now blue lines here, they can do lots of different things. Sometimes it's a repeated word, sometimes it's a grammatical thing. Um, sometimes it's like capitalization errors, different things like that. In this case, what they're noticing right now is that it should be capitalized because the beginning of the sentence. And so I can click change and it says that everything is good and correct now in terms of spelling and grammar. However, as we look at this, we realize that this word is not correct, right? Um, this word is not correct because, like I said, it's a computer. It's just looking at what is actually going on. And so that's why proofing, sometimes the computer can't do it all for you and you have to go in and you have to change it yourself. All right, so I added a couple more sentences. Hopefully I was trying to get some green lines to appear, but it just doesn't want to recognize fragments. Usually that's what you see when a green line appears. It means it's an incomplete sentence. It's just a fragment. It doesn't have a subject or a verb, um, something like that. And because of that, it's going to put a green line under it, and it's, it's a grammar mistake that it's recognizing. And so... You kind of have these different ideas about spelling errors, grammar errors, and um, just repeated words and different things like that. And so that's what the blue line, green line, and red line um, are all about. Uh, the last feature that we see here is that um, that really just covers what's called spelling and grammar improving. And there's really obviously two more ideas here. So that if you were typing something, or maybe you were typing a paper and you quoted something, and suddenly you had uh, a big word like prodigious, right? And suddenly you're like, well, I'm not really sure what in the world that means. Um, and it wants me to download a dictionary. I guess I haven't done that yet. But you could look it up, and it's going to define it for you. I'm just going to download this now even though you guys don't have to do that right now. Um, it's a word that is there and it is available. Usually, of course, you don't you don't want to be using words you don't know what they mean. So if it's in there and you don't know what it means, probably isn't the best word that you want to be using because when you type something up, you're claiming that it's yours and obviously you need to understand it. All right. However, sometimes... If you're reading through a sentence, right? The good girl walked to the store for some tasty fruit. All right? We started to go through our sentences. We're, we're realizing that, okay, I have everything proper, right? I fixed the words, my homonyms, right? Spelling mistakes. But now sometimes, you know, your writing teacher, your teacher is going to say, spice it up. Make it, make it sound more interesting. Add more color, add more adjectives and adverbs to it, or as you use them, you know, use new ones, different ones. And you might just not be a big word person yet and you, as your vocabulary is growing. And so sometimes we want to use what's called the thesaurus, right, where we highlight a word like good. We go up to here where it says thesaurus, and when we click thesaurus, we're going to see the word good. We're going to see um, a list of words that are synonyms of the word that we want to use. And so I could talk about lots of different things that could refer to the word good, depending on what I was trying to come across. Right? It also gets into what are known as antonyms. Right? Those are opposites. Um, you can use that feature also. Okay, see so we've got our definitions coming up for the word good now that I downloaded that dictionary. All right, and so I can think of one, and I can think, um, let's see, this is a girl going to the store, so let's go the well-behaved, right? And when I click well-behaved, right, I can... Let's make sure it actually goes in now. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. All right, we're 
we're going to go over here to this little arrow. We're going to click insert. And you see it has replaced that word for here. The good is gone. Different things. All right. So I can go to a different word like tasty. Um, I can click thesaurus to do that. Um, I can pick appetizing. If I click just on the word, it's going to start looking for more synonyms of that word. Right? But if I want to insert it, I'm just going to go ahead and insert that just like that. And so you're going to be doing that idea. All right, then getting back to the tutorial, what you're going to see on your paper right, are these two paragraphs. And in these two paragraphs, the instant you, um, whether you copy and paste it into your document, whether you insert it um, because you download the file and you, you, you're learning how to use that insert function, you're going to have these two paragraphs on your page. Um, already you can see how there's blue lines, there's red lines. Uh, what you can't see are any green lines at the moment. And um, depending on the order that you do things, you may um, see some green lines appear. But your assignment is to take these two paragraphs and to improve them, proof them, edit them. You've got to make sure that all the homonyms, right, this paragraph is full of homonyms. Right? And so you got to find all the words that are, are misspelled or misused and, and correct them so that they have the correct word with the correct definition. All right? The second paragraph called celebrity, uh, hopefully the first thing you're going to notice is that celebrity is not spelled correctly. Um, first of all, you got to go through and get all the spelling mistakes out of there, all that kind of stuff. Any green line, blue lines that appear, you want to fix those. Um, but you'll also notice that there are six, five green words, right? So these have been specifically colored green. And what I want you to do with those five green words is I want you to leave them the color green, all right? So you might have to go back and change the font color, right? So make sure they stay green, but you're going to go and you're going to use the thesaurus to change those five words and find synonyms that maybe fit this paragraph better. So you can think about different ways to apply that as you work with that. And so you're learning more and more about how to use Microsoft Word and using these new tools, the proofing tools for spelling and grammar, defining words, thesaurus, and maybe even someday you'll work with word count, which uh, if you haven't noticed this before, it always appears down here next to your pages. All right, so there's 462 words in this document right now. And so you can look at all those different things as you're working with it. All right, that's enough for this video. Um, plenty of things to do. So this is word B. Pursue excellence.